Good morning and welcome to the video for Monday, January the 4th. This is going to be a lesson for fifth grade. So hope you guys had a great uh, Christmas break and are looking forward to being back in building in about a week and a half. I'm look looking forward to seeing all of you again. Um, until then, I'm going to be doing these videos again every day. Um, a couple different things. Obviously, you'll notice that the layout's a little bit different. Um, I'm going to have the homework and everything written up here, and I might remember to add some additional notes. Like, for instance, you need notebook paper for uh, today because we are going to be working with fraction strips. Um, so you don't need to cut them up to make the fraction strips. We're just going to draw models uh, similar to what we see here for the problems that that will be helpful for us. Um, and then uh, we are not going to do um, homework review videos. And the reason being was that was not as productive. Uh, we had a bunch of people just watching that part and then copying the answers and then you didn't really understand how to do anything. So um, I'm going to let you guys um, know what the homework is. Um, I will be available to help if you have questions. You can send me an email, send me a message on Google Classroom. Um, and I'm looking at trying to set up uh, individual time spots so that people can get one-on-one -on -one help uh, virtually. Uh, to be able to um, get help with your homework and stuff instead of doing like a big uh, group meeting that everybody can come into. I'm going to try it that way. I'm not sure if it's going to work out or not, but um, especially because I don't know how many people are going to be available to do that. So um, I'm re-recording this video because everything crashed for some reason in the middle. So I hope that doesn't happen again. All right. So here we go. Um, I am going to go ahead and kind of move quickly through this again if you need to pause the video um, to work through something um, i will give you prompts to do that if i forget and you need to watch something a second time to understand what's going on feel free to rewind or pause the videos you need to all right so we are working with fraction strips we are going to be uh, figuring out what the total of one half plus one fourth is so what we can do for this is actually to break up this part into fourths and so if I go ahead and do that, this part is going to be worth two fourths. I'm going to have a yellow part that is worth one fourth. And then if I add those together, I can go ahead and get the top number is going to be three. The bottom number stays the same because we're counting um, parts out of four. And so three fourths would be uh, my answer for that. <clears throat> So uh, let's go ahead and do these two problems. So number one, um, what would we do with fraction strips to get a common denominator that will work for halves and thirds? So one of the ways that we can find a common denominator would be to multiply the two bottom numbers together. And if we do that, we would get the number six, which would end up working. So what I could do is I could take my fraction strip that is one half and then um, make that into parts out of six. I could take my one that's for one third and make that into parts out of six and then add those together. Um, and actually, if I did that, uh, what I would end up with is I could multiply across. I could do um, two sixths. So multiply the two bottom numbers and then diagonally we can multiply uh, three times one would give us three for the other. And then if they wanted us to add those together, we could go ahead and do that. Um, now the difference, if we draw fraction strips for this, let's say I do this one and we're counting this part as one half and I do one that's a similar size and I break it up into thirds and I'm counting this amount here. I don't really have anything good to go off of. I do know that it's going to be less than a whole shape if I add those two parts together, um, kind of like I would um, further up the page. This is a little bit difficult to but if I went ahead and sat those side by side and replaced the fourth with one third, it would come out a little bit farther. The only thing I'm going to be able to tell is that it's less than a whole. Um, so that part's not useful. We need to find um, an equivalent denominator or um, common denominator. 
and then the equivalent fractions that go with that. Um, for the right hand side, of course, I can break up my one half into one fourth size pieces evenly. And so using um, the fraction strips for that is much easier. So I'm going to recommend doing that um, when we have the option. So let's go ahead and take a look at the top of our next page. We are going to go ahead and draw some pictures. So I am going to start by making kind of a long rectangle here. Oops, kind of messed up the corner on that. And so let's say that I made both of those even. I didn't exactly, um, but I can try to fix that real quick. <laughs> he says as he draws a curve instead of a straight line, but whatever, they're, they're close enough, all right? So what we're going to be able to do is find a common denominator. Now, I'm not going to do the one half first, and I'll show you why in just a moment. So I am going to start with my one fifth. So I'm going to try as best as I can. And that's pretty decent. So I'm going to be able to count three parts out of five going this way. Now, I'm going to have to eventually find a, con a, min min a common denominator. Words are hard. Um, and so to do that, it's actually going to be easier if I make the one half side of this start like this and then let's say i shade in the top half of this and the reason i'm doing that is now if i want to change this from parts out of five to parts out of ten all i have to do is draw a straight line across the middle of this and i'm already done for this one if i go ahead and make break it in half then it's going to be a little bit tricky trying to change that half into parts out of five and then cut across the middle because I'm going to have to do more work uh, to be able to get that. I could do like splitting one half like in five this way, but then the, the parts don't look quite the same. And So now I'm counting for the top part. Um, five parts out of 10. So that would be what the one half would be worth. This one, I'm counting six parts out of 10. And sometimes we can end up with an answer that's larger than the total number of parts that we would have in one shape. So we could end up with an improper fraction. So if we do that, we add our top numbers together. Six plus five gives us 11 parts over 10. And then to change that to a mixed number, I would go ahead and take away the number of parts in one whole, so that would be 11 minus 10. And so I am going to do that, and I'm going to get one whole shape for doing that. When I subtract, I'm going to get my number of parts out of 10 that are left over, and that would be 1. So I would get 1 and 1 tenth, or 11 tenths, and that would be the smallest. Um, I can't uh, reduce the fraction. Uh, before I do that. If I had an even number, I, I could possibly do that. Um, so let's go ahead and look at number one and number two. Number two, we're going to do something awfully similar uh, to what we did up here. So think about using that picture to help you, um, except this time we are counting two-fifths instead of three-fifths um, plus one-half. So we'll get something that's very similar. <laughs> if we use the picture that we already did up at the top. And then for this one, we can actually break this up into eights and then go ahead and add across. So um, go ahead and look at that. Pause the video if you need to. When you're ready, go ahead and hit play. All right, so for this one, I mentioned we can go ahead and split this up into eights. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And so I've got one, two, three, four eighths plus three-eighths, and then I'm just adding the top two numbers together, and that would give us seven parts out of eight. Uh, for the other one, we are looking at uh, five-tenths again, plus four-tenths, and then this time we are not going to need um, to reduce or um, 
uh, give a mixed number because we will only have nine parts out of 10. All right, on to the next page. So we are looking at problem number three. Um, this is not showing up very nicely on my screen, but this should be one fourth. Um, and then the, the yellow parts are one fourth and the orange part is one third. Um, so what we can do for this is go ahead and use our strategy that we did before, where we can go ahead and divide this up and then go ahead and add those number of parts together. For this one, we're going to get um, a, a common denominator that is different than four or three. So we can multiply the bottom numbers to find that. And then we can find our equivalent fractions and then add those together. So go ahead and do that. And when you are ready, go ahead and hit play again. Pause the video uh, for now while you work on that. So um, assuming that you did that, I'm going to go ahead and draw a line through the middle of this guy here. So this is going to give me 3 eighths plus 2 eighths. And that would give us 5 eighths. All right, and for this one, we need parts out of 12. So this is going to be less useful, except to tell us that we're gonna go past a whole. Um, so what we can do is multiply our bottom numbers together to get parts out of 12. And then to figure out how many parts out of 12, uh, 3 fourths is, we can do three times three to get nine. And for the one third, we can do four times one, which gives us four. And then we can add those together. So that gives us 13 parts out of 12 or one whole, because we go past a whole. And then we can do 13 minus 12. So our remainder would be one. So we get one part out of 12. Uh, number five, we can go ahead and um, use fraction strips, or what we can do is go ahead and um, find our equivalent fraction. We can do something similar for this one uh, and this one. So we don't have to um, do as much. Our um, common denominator for 5 and 10 would be 10. Common denominator for 4 and 12 would be 12. And common denominator for 2 and 10 would be 10. So uh, let's go ahead and work on those three. Um, I would suggest that if you want to draw a picture, that would be very helpful. Um, but make sure that you start um, by, um, well, let's do this one. So let's go So here's our whole. And then you need to understand that we are working um, with parts out of 10. And so what I would do is go ahead and line that bottom part out of 10 and then go ahead and figure out what this would be and then go ahead and set it up that way. Um, but you may not actually need that. So go ahead and work on that. Uh, give it a try. Um, I will show you a couple examples um, as we get a little bit further along. So I'll do this one and I may do uh, one of these other ones here um, along the way. So here is my whole. So this would be one. And so I would divide this up into 10 equal parts, hopefully. So I'm going to do this. Yeah, that kind of works. All right, so now the green part is going to be four parts out of 10. The red part is going to be three parts out of 10. And when I add those together, that would give me seven parts out of 10. Um, our next one, we would get um, four times three. Oh yeah. So the other thing that we can do, um, when we were working with equivalent fractions, we could multiply the top and bottom number by two for this one to get to parts out of 10. For this one, I would multiply my top and bottom number by three because I'm going from four to 12. And for this one, I would multiply my top and bottom number by five to get from, uh, uh, here to 10. 
So this would give me um, 3 twelfths plus 1 twelfth equals 4 twelfths. Or we could reduce this one. So we could go ahead and divide my top and bottom number by 4, uh, and that would give us 1 third. Uh, this one we would get 5 tenths plus 3 tenths, and that gives us 8 tenths. Or, whoops, that's a really bad looking. <laughs> or four parts out of five. We could then divide both of these um, top and bottom by two uh, to find that. Um, let's move along. Let's see, let's do number 10. So number 10 is um, more of this practicing the cross multiplying thing that I was telling you about. So our one half side, we multiply by five our one-fifth side, we multiply by two. And so if I do that, I'm going to get five parts out of 10 plus two parts out of 10. And then you can go ahead and add it together from there. And that would give us seven tenths. So let's look at our problem solving questions real quick. Um, so explain how using fraction strips with like denominators makes it possible to add fractions with unlike denominators. So let's say I want to do problem number 10 here. Why would making fraction strips help with that particular question? So think about that for a second. All right. This is not my preferred method, but the reason why it works um, is because it, we can go ahead um, and make our unlike denominators into like denominators by changing our pictures. So for instance, back at the beginning of the lesson, we were working with uh, parts out of five. So let's um, go back over here. So we were working with parts out of five and um, halves. So we could actually set it up to make the picture where it will give us um, like denominators and make it easier. Um, we can do something similar with that, although I wouldn't necessarily write the picture um, that way to figure out the answer to that. Um, number 12, Lewis is making two batches of muffins for a school picnic. One batch uses one quarter of a cup of oats and a third of a cup of flour. And so we want to figure out how much um, we need of both objects um, or uh, both um, ingredients, excuse me, um, for two batches. So what we can do to start with is actually do um, multiply both of these by two. So we can do two fourths and two thirds. So we don't really need, and I meant to go grab my measuring, uh, measuring cups. Um, we don't really need to find an equivalent fraction for uh, either of these, but if we wanted to, we could go ahead and uh, now work with this and we could go ahead and multiply our top and bottom number by three uh, for this side and multiply the top and bottom number by four to get the answer for this side. Um, but when we're working with measuring cups, we don't have to worry about that. We're just combining everything together. We don't have to know exactly. Um, the only part we need to know is exactly how much we're supposed to use. So if we're gonna do two batches, we need two, cup, two parts or uh, two uh, fourths of a cup and we need um, two scoops out of the one third cup uh, measuring cup to do that. Uh, let's see. 
Oh, okay, let's do this one. This one we will need to go ahead and change our fractions to figure out the total amount of ingredients in um, as it relates to cups. Um, so for the first one where we're just doing the recipe, we don't have to do the conversion. This one we will. So we want to find a common denominator for three, four, and six. And so one of the ways that we could do that is we could go ahead and write out a list like this. Counting by threes, we can do the same thing for fours. So I would say maybe write out the first five multiples. And then for six, we could do six, 12, 18, 24, and 30. And so now what we want to do is find the smallest number that is in all three lists. And I realize that as I'm doing this, I've actually covered it up um, because I don't have this part scooted over uh, far enough to the left, which is fine because now that makes you have to do it. So <laughs> um, now let me go ahead and scoot it over um, and get this part on screen. So our smallest common multiple or least common multiple is going to be 12. So that's the smallest number that appears in all three lists. So we are going to change two parts out of 12. And so now we have our extra step of figuring out, so what number do I multiply three by to get to 12? Well, if I made my list, I already know that it's one, two, three, four. So I can go ahead and make this into four parts out of 12. And then for one fourth, um, I did one, two, three. So I can uh, multiply by three, so three twelfths. And then one sixth, that would give me two twelfths. Again, the number that I multiply six by to get to 12 is also going to be the number that I multiply the one by. And so now I can go ahead and add these together. I get four plus three to get seven plus two to get nine. And then I want you to think, can we reduce nine twelfths? Is there a number that we can count by to get to both nine and 12? And so the answer is yes. And we could actually use our list to help us with that. It would be three. So four times three gives us 12 and three times four gives us 12. So we can divide our top and bottom number by three and that would give us three fourths. All right, so um, I'm about out of time. So let me go ahead and look at the homework part uh, for today. So we are going to be doing uh, problems number, problem numbers, excuse me, two through 11. And so for each of these, I want you to go ahead and use a strategy that works for you. So if you need to go back and rewatch um, what it looks like to go ahead and do the fraction strips um, or doing the multiplication part uh, to find, make both of the uh, fractions have the same common denominator, go ahead and do that. Um, so we're doing everything on the front except for this last one. Um, and you can use either method to find the answer. It looks like all of these are working with addition of two fractions. On the back, I would like you to do all six problems. Um, I did put a note uh, for, actually for number one, instead of doing a fraction strip, you could actually make a circle and make it look like a piece of pizza or a, um, a pizza and break it up into eight total parts. And then you could use that to help you figure out the answer for that one. Uh, let's see. So number four, we need to write this out as a long division problem. Make sure you keep in mind we are not working with decimals. Excuse me. Um, for this, we should have a whole number. Hopefully, uh, if I remember correctly, we should have a whole number for the answer. Um, if not, then once we get past here, then we would go ahead and put our decimal point here, add a zero, and then keep going um, until we finish the problem. Uh, let's see. 
Okay, um, so that should be about it. So uh, we, we do want to change this. Um, and this is going to be uh, the base for this is going to be 14 over 16. Um, and then, oh, I'm sorry, it's a, sorry, 14 pounds times 16. So this one's going to be multiplication. So make sure we use our correct strategy for multiplying um, two digit numbers. So the first row is going to be the answer to six times 14. Then we put a zero and then the second row is going to be the answer to 14 times 10 when we get that. Okay. So hope you have a great day. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in Google Classroom uh, or you can send me an email. Hope you have a great day and I will see you tomorrow.